Good day folks, my name is Sean and this is Air Photography. Whenever DJI releases a new drone, I like to make a beginner's guide to help those who have never flown a drone before get comfortable with the equipment and get ready for their very first flight. I made a beginner's guide for the original Mavic Air 2, but with the release of the new Air 2S and many software and firmware updates over the last year, I thought I'd make an updated guide to make it more relevant for 2021. Now these beginner guides can get a little bit long, so I always recommend bookmarking it and that way you can always come back and reference it later. In this video, I'm I'm going to go over easy to understand terms from a standpoint of somebody who has never flown a drone before. We're going to go over the hardware, we're going to go over the software, we're going to talk about firmware, different flight modes, what type of memory to use for your drone, and a lot of different tips and information along the way. When you're done watching this video you should be comfortable and ready to take your first flight. So let's just jump right in and get started. Now when you purchase the DJI Air 2S, this is everything that's going to come inside the box. Now this is the Fly More combo, so we do have some extra components compared to the base package, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But basically what you get inside is the aircraft. There is one battery already pre-installed in the aircraft. We get two additional batteries. We have the controller. We have the charger, the power cord for the charger. We have a charging hub. We have some extra data cables for the controller, depending on what type of phone you use, and we'll go over that a little bit more in detail here in a minute. We have some ND filters, and again, we'll talk about them a little bit later on in the video. We have an extra set of control sticks for the controller. There's already some installed in the controller, and I'll show you them here in a minute. We have a USB-C cable. This can be used for a couple different things. First of all, you can use it to charge your controller, but you can also use it to connect a drone to a computer to update the firmware. We get this power bank adapter. What this does here is you can attach it to one of your batteries and basically once installed it turns your battery into a power bank so you can charge up your phone you can even charge up the controller top it off if you need we do get some basic information about the drone it's a good idea to go through and read these there's also more detailed versions online that you can download and then over here to the right we get propellers there's three complete sets of propellers and if you notice here Two of them are labeled differently. This one's labeled Propeller A and this is Propeller B. So we're going to talk about that here in a minute and how to install them and what the difference is. As mentioned, this is the Fly More Combo and it costs $12.99. You can also purchase the base kit. Basically, it's pretty well the same, except it only comes with one battery, the controller, the charger, and a few extra propellers. And I believe it comes in at a price of $9.99. And lastly, here with the Fly More Combo, we get a nice little case. Everything that comes with the Fly More package will fit inside this case. So we're going to go ahead here and take a more detailed look at the equipment, starting with the aircraft. These drones are foldable, which makes it nice and compact and easy to travel with. To unfold it, you're going to start with the front arms. You're just going to pull them out. And these back arms kind of twist down and out. As you can see, there's a bunch of stickers on the drone that do have to be removed. Now we're going to take the gimbal guard off here, so we're going to press down at the bottom there and just pull off like that. And don't forget there are some stickers that a lot of people tend to miss. Right on the back of the gimbal there, you can see there's one. And on either side there's a couple small ones. So now that we have all the stickers off, let's go ahead and take a look at the drone here. One of the new features of the Air 2S is this nice new camera. It now has a 1 inch sensor. It's capable of recording in 5.4K, and it fully supports 10-bit color. Right above that, you can see we also have two new sensors with the upgraded model. So that gives us a total of four obstacle avoidance sensors on the front of the drone. So this drone can sense obstacles from the front, from the top. It also has two rear-facing obstacle avoidance sensors. And if we flip the drone over here, you can see we have two more at the bottom. We also have an LED light here in the middle. That makes landing at night a little bit easier as it will light up the landing surface. If we flip the drone over to the side here, you can see we have a flap. Underneath that is an opening where we install our memory. And we're going to talk about memory here in a minute. If we go over to the other side, there's another flap. And underneath that is a USB-C port. That's used for connecting the drone to a computer. It's one way you can update the firmware. We're going to talk about that here in a minute as well. On the top of the drone here, you can see we have a power button. And that's actually built right into the battery. To remove the battery, there's two buttons on either side. You just press in and it will pull right out. As mentioned with the Fly More combo, you get a total of three batteries. To charge your batteries, you're going to take the charging brick that comes with the unit. If you didn't purchase the Fly More combo, you're going to charge up the battery, plugging it directly into the adapter. It'll only go in one way. Once it's plugged in, you're going to see these lights light up. And as you can see there, it's now charging. When it's fully charged, those LED lights will go out. If you purchase the Fly More combo, you're going to get this charging hub. 
So you can charge your batteries directly by plugging them into the power brick or by using the charging hub. To use the charging hub, we're gonna take that same end and plug it into the side there. And then we're just gonna plug the batteries in one at a time. Now, one thing you need to note about this charging hub is that it doesn't charge all three batteries at the same time. It'll only charge one battery in succession. And the way it does it, it scans the batteries first to see which one has the most charge in it. The battery that has the most charge in it will start to be charged first. And the reason it does that is so you can get up and flying quicker. If you've got two batteries that are completely empty, but you have one that's half full, it's gonna charge that one that's already half full first. That way you can unplug it, put it back on your drone and get up in the air. You can unplug a fully charged battery while the other two continue to charge. Now, while we're on the subject of charging here, we're gonna use this power brick to charge up our controller as well. We're gonna take the USB-C cable that came with the kit. You're gonna notice at the top of the charging brick, there's a USB-A port. So we just plug in our USB-C cable and then into the controller. You can see some LED lights illuminate. And again, when this is fully charged, those lights will go out. Now you don't have to charge the controller from the power brick. You can charge it from any USB-C charger, and that includes power banks. Now, once your batteries are fully charged, you can press on that power button when it's not installed. You can see some small LED lights that illuminate there. That'll signify how much charge is in the battery. When it's fully charged, you can go ahead and plug it back into the drone. Just by a firm press down, you're gonna hear a good click. So at this point, it's now time to install our propellers. As mentioned earlier in the video, we have two types of propellers that come with the kit. We have a Type B and a Type A. Now, Type B, Type A, you don't really have to remember. There's something a little bit more important. But to get going here, we're going to need two Type A and two Type B. So we'll go ahead and we'll take them out of the packages here. Now, we have them out of the package here, and you'll notice that there's nowhere on the propeller where it's listed Type A, Type B. But what you can see here is these ones have this orange circle around the hub and these ones are black. So those are the only differences that you need to pay attention to. You don't need to know which is type A, type B. You just wanna pay attention to that orange circle. If we take a look at the drone here, you can see this motor back here has orange paint on it and so does this one here, whereas these two are black. So that's basically all you're gonna do. You're gonna match up the orange paint on the hub of the propeller to the motor with the orange paint. If you look really closely, you can actually see a little arrow with a lock sign. So that shows you which way you have to twist them in to lock. You just press them down into that opening and they twist and lock in. It's always a good idea just to double check to make sure that they're secure. So again, we'll take this one with the orange on it and we'll lock it into this motor. Now we'll take our two black ones. And if you notice there, I twisted the opposite way because the arrow on them is pointing that way. So just like that, we now have our propellers installed and the aircraft is ready to go. Before we move on here, I'm just gonna show you quickly how to power on and off the aircraft. It uses a double press sequence. You need to do a quick press and then a long press. So on the battery button there, we're gonna do a quick press and then a long press and hold. You're gonna hear the aircraft power on. It's gonna go through a series of calibrations. The gimbal is gonna move around quite a bit. And then you'll hear that startup noise. And don't be alarmed, I've actually had questions in the past. There will be a fan that turns on, that's quite normal. To power the drone off, it's the exact same thing. It's a two press sequence, a short press, and then again a long and hold press. And the drone will power off. So let's go ahead here and we'll take a closer look at the controller. This is pretty well the exact same controller that came with the original Air 2, the DJI Mini 2, and now the Air 2S. Our control sticks are stored in the bottom. That makes the controller easy to pack away when traveling. And they just screw in. And as mentioned, if you happen to lose them, because sometimes it does happen if you're out in the field putting them in, you drop them in some tall grass, they're very hard to find. So you do get an extra set that comes with the Fly More kit. At the top here is our phone mounting system, but it's also our antenna, and it just pulls out there like that. Tucked down underneath is our connection port for our phone. By default, it's pre-installed with a lightning connector for iPhones. But if you have an Android device, we have a USB-C connector, and we also have a micro USB connector, depending on what type of phone you have. So if you're going to be connecting to an Android device, you would just disconnect this cable and use one of the ones provided. So let's take a look at the buttons on the controller here. We have our control sticks. We have a function button that can perform various tasks. We have our return to home and pause button. Right here in the middle, we have our flight mode button. We have Syn smooth. That allows the drone to fly a little bit slower and more controlled. We have our normal flight mode in the middle. 
And then on the right hand side we have sport mode. Sport mode allows the drone to fly quite fast. Just very important to note that you don't have obstacle avoidance in sport mode. Right beside the mode selector here we have our power button. Below that we have some LEDs. And again at any time we can just do one single press on the power button. That'll show us how much charge is in the controller. Over here on the very right hand side we have a button that will switch the filming mode. We'll flip the controller over here and take a look at the back of it. On this side over here you can see we have a dial. Basically that's how we tilt our camera up and down. And over here on the other side we have a record for our video and also our shutter button for taking photos. And as I've already shown you here at the bottom we have a USB-C port for charging the controller and also for updating the firmware. To power the controller on and off it's just like the drone it uses a two press sequence a short press and then a long press and hold. So a quick press and then a long press. Now you're gonna notice here when you power on the controller and it's not connected to a drone, these lights are just gonna blink. Once it connects to the drone, these lights will go solid. To power off the controller, again, it's a two press sequence, short press and then long press. So before we get too far, we should talk about memory for the drone. My favorite brand of memory is SanDisk. If you go to the DJI website, they'll list all the different types of memory that are compatible. You can put up to a 256 gigabyte card in this drone. Now myself, I would prefer to have two 128s over one 256, just for the fact if one card happens to become corrupt while you're out flying, you've always got a second one with you. So to install the memory card, we're gonna put the graphic facing down. So you want those little metal strips facing up and then it just inserts just like that. Make sure you hear that click when you press it in to make sure it's seated properly. Now speaking of memory here, this drone actually comes with eight gigabytes of internal memory. It's not a lot, but it does come in handy if you ever forget to bring a memory card with you. At least you know you do have about eight gigabytes of storage to work with. When you power on the drone for the very first time, it may ask you what storage location you wanna use, whether you wanna use the card or the internal storage. So now at this point, we've gone over all the hardware, we've gone over the controller and the aircraft. We're now getting closer to our first flight, but there's some very important things we need to do first. What we have to do is get our smartphone mounted in the controller. We need to download the companion app for the drone, which is called DJI Fly. We need to activate the aircraft and we need to update the firmware. Now I'm going to be using an iPhone for this demonstration, but if you use an Android device, it works exactly the same. One important thing to note, however, not all Android devices are supported, so it's a good idea to check on the DJI website which ones are compatible. Most iPhones and iPads are compatible. If you want to fly with an iPad, you will have to get an adapter to allow it to fit. So to install our phone, we're just going to pull that cable out first. Make sure the antenna is fully extended, and then we're just going to slide the phone in there like that. Once the phone's installed, we're just going to plug in the connection cable. Now the next step is you want to download the DJI Fly app. You can see I already have mine installed here. You can just go to the App Store and search for DJI Fly. Once it's installed here, you can go ahead and launch it. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and power on the controller with a quick press and then a long press. And then we're going to power on the drone, exact same way, quick press and long press. It'll take upwards of about 30 seconds for both to power on and connect to each other. So you can see here it's already come up to activate the drone. At this point you should have already created a DJI account. So once you've done that you can go ahead and hit agree. And then it's going to ask you to activate. So at this point you want to make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi because it needs internet access to activate the drone. It's also going to need internet access to update the firmware which will be the next step. You can see there that it activated successfully so we will hit done. At this point it'll ask you if you want to purchase DJI Care Refresh but we're going to exit out of that. So now we're at the main page of the DJI Fly app and as you can see there it's telling us we have a firmware update. Updating the firmware right through the controller in your smartphone is the easiest way to do it. As mentioned you can plug each device into a computer and download some software and update it that way as well. But definitely this is the easiest most streamlined way. So all we're going to do here is click on update firmware and you can see there it's now installing the update. We can actually click on it too and it'll show us exactly all the new updates that are being added. Now this can take some time upwards of about 10 minutes so I'm going to fast forward through this part. So you can see there the firmware is done being installed and we get a check mark signifying that it was done successfully. So we can now go ahead and press that X and that'll take us back to the main page. Now at this point you might also get a message saying that the flight database or safe flight database needs to be updated. That's to do with the geozone so you don't accidentally fly in areas you're not supposed to fly. So it's a good idea to update that as well. 
Now, a couple important things to note here. During the firmware update, it updated the aircraft, it updated the controller, but it also updated the battery at the same time. These batteries are considered intelligent flight batteries, so they have firmware as well. So that's important to know because if you purchase the Flymore combo, you have two extra batteries. The firmware on these batteries need to be updated as well. So to update them, it's actually very simple. Just leave your controller running just like that. Power off the aircraft, take the battery out, put the new battery in, power the aircraft back on. And if there is a firmware update available for the battery, it'll give you a notification saying that the battery needs to be updated. You just press install like we already have done and it will go ahead and update the battery. You'll need to repeat that process for every battery that you have. So here's the main interface of the Fly app and the most important thing you wanna make note of is this Go Fly button. When you're ready to take a flight, you're just gonna press on that Go Fly and that's gonna launch the camera view of the drone. Now I'm not going to go over everything within the Fly app because there is quite a bit, but I'm going to go over the most important things that you need to know. Over here on the very right hand side, that's our camera control. You can see we have our shutter button and depending whether we're in photo mode or video mode, that's the button that we'll be using to either take a photo or to capture video. To switch modes, we're going to press the icon right above the shutter button. And you can see there it lists our various modes. At the very top there, we have photo mode, we have video mode. We have something called Master Shots. Master Shots is an intelligent flight mode that captures predefined um, different types of styles of shots. And I'm not gonna get into that into this video. I've already actually created a video all about Master Shots. So definitely you might wanna go and check that out. Right below that, we have Quick Shots. Again, those are considered an intelligent flight mode that will capture predefined different style of shots. Below that, we have Hyperlapses, which is kind of like a time lapse up in the air. And right below that, we have different types of panels that we can capture. Now down here in the bottom right hand corner you can see we have some information. It tells us how much storage we have on our card and depending on whether you're in video mode or photo mode that's going to change to either how many photos you can take or how much recording time you have left. Beside that we have our resolution in frames per second and we can adjust that by clicking on it. You can see it's right now set to 4k but we can set it up to 5k or down even to 2.7K. In that same window, we can also set frames per second. For the most part, myself, I always film at either 4K 30 frames per second or 4K 60 frames per second. Right beside that, we have our EV compensation. That allows you to make some micro adjustments to the exposure if it's either overexposed or underexposed. You can just press on that and use the slider to make some minor adjustments. Now, right beside that, you can see we have a little picture that says auto. We can press on that and that's going to put it into pro mode. In pro mode, we can go in and adjust all different things like our shutter speed, ISO, and different things like that. I'm not going to get too much into detail in this video, but definitely it's something to go in and play around with. At the top right hand side, we have some very important information. You can see we have a picture of a satellite and right now mine is red and it says zero. And that's because I'm indoors and it cannot connect to any satellites. If we were outside, you would see that number go up, upwards of 22, 23 satellites it would connect to. And that little icon of the satellite would turn green. You don't want to fly until you've connected to at least 12 satellites or higher. Those satellites help hold the drone in position, but it also helps the drone to come home if you press the return to home button or it happens to become disconnected from the controller. Right beside that, we also have RC strength. That dictates the strength of the signal from the controller to the drone. So the farther you fly out or if there's a lot of uh, interference, those bars will go down. So it's an important thing to keep an eye on. Over beside that, we have some information about our battery. It tells us how much flight time we have left, and we can actually click on it. Now, right now, it doesn't show us anything. Everything is set to zero, but if we were flying up in the air, it would show us how much time we have until it returns to home automatically. It shows us how much time before it is forced to land, and it also shows us how much time until the battery is completely depleted. Definitely some important information that you need to keep an eye on. At the top of the screen, it kind of gives us some information about when it's okay to take off. Right now it's saying take off with caution because we're not connected to any satellites. That message will change depending on the conditions. Beside that, it tells us our flight mode. Right now it's set to sport mode. You'll notice if I switch it over to normal here, that changes to end mode. The other button I'm gonna show you here is on the very left-hand side. It's a little circle with the arrow pointing up. That is our takeoff button. And when we're flying in the air, that's also our return to home and land button. So that's basically a quick look at the interface, the main icons on the screen, important things that you need to know about. These three dots up here in the right-hand corner, if we press on them, 
that's going to give us different information, different settings that we can change on the drone. Again, I'm not going to go through everything because there is quite a bit there. I'm just going to go over the most important ones that you should know for your first flight, but definitely take some time and explore through the menus. This first column up here is called safety, and this is the one you want to pay attention to. The first thing we can do is set our obstacle avoidance. We can turn it right off. We can have the behavior set to break or we can have it set to bypass. And basically what that does is if the drone encounters an obstacle, as mentioned, you can have the drone just stop, it breaks and stops the drone, or you can have it set to bypass. And what the drone is gonna try and do is find a safe path around the obstacle. So for example, if you're flying towards a tree and it encounters a tree, it detects it, it's gonna try and go around it or over top of it. Below that is our flight parameters. And you can set limits to how high you can fly and how far you can fly. Right now you can see the max distance I have it set to is 480. That's the stock value when you get the drone and it's brand new. You can slide it all the way up to no limit. Or if you don't want to go very far, you could set it at like, say, something like there, 130 meters. The legal height limit here in Canada and many other countries is 400 feet or 120 meters. So definitely I wouldn't set that any higher because you don't want to be breaking any laws. And if you're just learning, you might even want to bring that down a little bit. Uh, the real important one you want to note here is this auto return to home altitude. Basically what that is, if you hit the return to home button and you have the drone come home automatically, before it starts to come home, it's going to raise up to that altitude. So it's a good idea to set that return to home altitude higher than the tallest obstacle in the area. You don't always want to rely on that obstacle avoidance because it's not a perfect thing. So if you're flying in an area in a park, say there's trees that are 30 meters, you just want to make sure you're higher than that. The default is set to 100 meters, and that's a good height to leave it at. The next down here is our compass calibration and IMU calibration. For the IMU, you only really need to calibrate it if it gives you an IMU error, and it will tell you that it needs to be calibrated. The compass is something that I like to calibrate usually almost every flight. It literally takes like 12 seconds, and it just ensures that the aircraft is going to fly correctly. If you notice your aircraft is behaving oddly, say you're trying to fly straight but it's kind of drifting off to the side, it's a good idea then to calibrate the compass and the IMU, even if it's not telling you to. So again, there's all kinds of settings in there, different things you can adjust and customize, but for right now, that's really all you need to know. So we're gonna get ready to take our first flight here. I'm just gonna explain a few different things to you. Uh, first off, let's take a look at these joysticks here, and I'll just give you a brief rundown of how they work. The right stick controls two movements. If we push it forward, the drone is going to move forward. If we pull it back, the drone is going to move back. If we go from side to side, the drone, again, is going to move accordingly. The left-hand stick here is our altitude and our rotation, also known as yaw. To go higher, we're going to press up. To lower the altitude, we're going to pull down. Down in the bottom right hand corner, it shows you all the information of your telemetry, basically how far you are away and how high you are. If we move this control stick from side to side, what that's going to do is spin the aircraft. That's also referred to as yaw. When you're ready to start recording video, you can press on the shutter button there, and that's going to start recording. But you can also use the button on the back of the controller. As you can see there, that'll stop and start recording as well. When it comes time to launch the drone, there's two different ways you can take off. Like I said, you can press that little arrow up button. That'll launch the drone and it will hover at about one meter. The other way is to use a stick command. And I'll just show you that here quickly. If we pull the sticks down and push them in, you can see that the motors start up. Now it's not gonna launch automatically. In order to put the drone up and hover, you're just gonna press up on the control stick. To shut the motors off, we're just going to pull down. Now, before we go out and do a quick flight, I just want to explain return to home. If you're new to drones, you might not be aware of what that is. Basically, return to home is a feature that allows the drone to come back to where it took off from in the event of an emergency. Say the drone becomes disconnected from the controller. You don't have to worry. If you're out even a mile, two miles, three miles, and the drone becomes disconnected, it's going to wait a few seconds and then automatically come right back to where it took off from. It'll come down and land. And while it's coming home, it is going to keep trying to connect to the controller. So at that point, if you see that you do regain connection, you now then can take over control of the drone. A lot of people also use it just when you're done flying. If you're out somewhere, or if you've lost your orientation, you're not quite sure where the drone is up in the sky, you can just press return to home, 
either again that takeoff button will become a return to home button when you're out flying or you can press and hold it here on the remote as soon as you do engage it again the drone will come right back to you and land so with all that said i think we've covered everything we need to know let's just go out for a quick first flight so when you feel comfortable and you're ready to take your first flight there's a few things you should check before you fly if you click up at the top right hand side in your settings you can see we have a safety tab. You just want to check that to make sure there's no errors, especially under the compass or if the IMU, it may tell you that it needs to be calibrated. And if so, just follow the on-screen instructions. The other thing you may want to do is set your max altitude, your max distance, and your return to home altitude. Now there's two different ways in which we can launch the drone. Uh, the first is by hitting the button on the app. You can see that little up arrow pointing up. If we click on it, you can see another message pops up on the app and we can press and hold that. The propellers will start up and the drone's gonna take off and hover at about a meter to a meter and a half. To land the drone, again, we can press that same button Press and hold, and the drone's going to go back and land where it took off from. The other way to do it is to push your sticks down and in. You can see that the motors start up, but the drone hasn't taken off yet. It's just started the motors. Then all we do is press up on the control stick. And as you can see there, it's going to sit and hover. I'm just going to move the drone out a little bit just to uh, so it's not so noisy and I can talk. So at this point you just have to uh, kind of fly around. I would take things slow. Make sure you're out in a nice open field. Let's just go for a quick flight here. Now I did make a video earlier in the week about the Air 2S and Return to Home. It kind of goes a little bit more into detail. Uh, definitely go and watch that video. But I'll just show you quickly here how to use Return to Home. There's two ways to initiate Return to Home. The first is on the button on the controller. You can see that H there. If we press and hold it, it will automatically come home. The other way is to use the app. You can see that H with the arrow pointing down. If we click on that, you can see we actually get two options. We can get it to land right in place, or we can get it to return to home. So let's uh, select that one. I'll press and hold. You can see the drone is now going to turn around, and it's going to fly back to where it took off from. But what it does there first, you can see the drone's actually going up in altitude, because what it's doing there is going to our return to home altitude that we had set earlier on. And something happened, we either got disconnected or we manually press return to home. It's going to fly to that return to home altitude first, so it's going to go up to 100 meters, then come home, and then land. At any time that you're using return to home, if you think it's getting too close to something, you can always press that X on the screen or press the pause button on the controller. The Air 2S is equipped with precision landing, so it will pretty well land exactly where it took off from. Well folks, that's basically it for my beginner's guide. Hopefully you enjoyed it and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.